I'm Candace from The Passion at Home in downtown Langley. If you want to see me transform these suitcases into something beautiful, keep watching. So I'm going to start with this suitcase here that I found at a thrift store. It was like $6. It's, it's stunning inside, beautiful. I can show you that a little bit later. And with the magic of Annie Sloan chalk paint, some decoupage papers from Recycle Decoupage, um, and some amazing transfers from our Iron Orchid Designs. So lots of things to do today. We're gonna have some fun. We're gonna take it from this to something a little bit more beautiful. So with the Annie Sloan Chalk Paint, your biggest thing is cleaning it. So I've cleaned this first with some Blue Dawn, like just dish soap to degrease it and some hot water. Wash that off. And then because I don't know the story that this suitcase had, I actually took a little bit of a heavier degreaser, like a TSP or crud cutter, sprayed it on there, wiped it away and washed that off. So I know that my paint is going to stick. Started here with one coat of our Annie Sloan chalk paint. I used the color Old Ochre. It's a creamy, beautiful color. I've already got that on. It does dry very quickly and it has no odor. It is water-based, so it's going to clean up really easily. We're going to start with our decoupage. So the one I'm using today, I didn't want these suitcases to be identical. I wanted them to be in the same family. And so I'm using this beautiful light decoupage paper. It is a tissue. There's lots of different types of decoupage. There's the rice paper, there's tissue, there's napkins. Um, so we're going to use this beautiful one here with these. So if I were just to take my scissors and cut this out, I would have a very sharp edge all over the place and I want it to be a little bit more organic than that. So I'm just gonna take some water on a little paintbrush and, oh, I gotta decide what's going to be where. We want them up here. Okay, so this beautiful fairy queen over here, I'm gonna save her for another project. So I'm just gonna cut I'm just going to use my my wet paintbrush just to moisten that and be able to tear it. So I have an organic edge here and not a really sharp edge. And again, as you can see, I'm just on the other side here and um, finishing it off so that I don't have any sharp edges. So. I have my um, decoupage paper figured out where I want that to go on my piece. You'll notice that my color behind it is a fairly light color. We highly recommend a light color, a white is ideal. But the darker the color, the less that your image is going to show because that color is going to come through and, um, and just darken these beautiful details. So light color underneath is going to be your front. We sell the Annie Sloan Image Medium, which is fantastic. I love it because it's a little bit more matte than some of the other ones. But I'm actually today, I'm just going to be using the matte, the clear matte lacquer. I love this, this product as well. And um, so I'm gonna start with the Annie Sloan Image Medium here, and then I am going to layer that on top. Third, and then I'm just going to start on one of my edges. So I have this fairly lined up, thank you, Lori. And I'm just going to start over here and I'm actually going to end up covering the whole thing so I'm not too worried about getting my image medium everywhere. So again, I am using for today, the Annie Sloan Matte Lacquer. All right, so I'm gonna bring this up. Just gonna get started. And the key here is you want an even coat. You want to work in small sections so that it's not going to dry up and so that it's just easier to work with when you put your decoupage paper down. So again, I'm just going to layer this down. And I find that I like to rub from the center out. And I like a piece of plastic cling wrap or something like that just to help push those out without the paper sticking to my hands and making my hands all sticky. All right, just wanna make sure 
is all the way sealed down. I am going to be going over top of this. There may be the odd wrinkle in here. It really doesn't bother me at all. And, um, and when it dries, those wrinkles will get sucked back down. So I'm just gonna make sure that one there is down. <coughs> And so now I'm ready to do some more. So now this is already attached. I'm going to pull my paper back and slightly pull past what I've already done. And I can see my line there. And I'm just going to add that little bit more. I don't want a harsh line like that. I want it all to be fairly even and flat. Put here in now. So there's my next line there. I know how far I'm going. And here again, I'm going to gently, I'm starting from the center and pushing out, just like we did before. I, have enough, I don't have quite enough up here. Just going to add a wee bit there to make sure all these little bits are going to stick down. And then again, come in with my plastic bag. There's other ways of doing decoupage. You can put down your decoupage medium and then um, leave it to dry and come back over with the iron method where you reheat that and that reactivates the glue um, that's underneath. But being that this is a, I don't know, plastic type of suitcase, that was not something I wanted to test. <laughs> really important that I get all of these edges well secured. And so I'm just making sure that all of those edges are down. Oh, get a bit of a bubble there. That might be a little bit more than I want. So you still have, with the um, with these tissue paper um, decoupage papers, you do have a little bit of room. You don't want to be pulling them up too much because that will stretch them. Um, but you have a little bit of wiggle room my tissue onto the base and now i'm actually going to go right over top of the whole thing one more time with a layer of my medium and again i really want to focus on making sure that all of those edges are down and cut erase all those beautiful wrinkles and add some colored waxes and just make it look like it's old and vintage and beautiful okay so i think i've got the whole thing pretty much covered. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually going to, let me just double, double check the sheen on here. I'm actually going to now set this one aside and let it dry for a little bit. And I'm gonna bring up the bigger one that we have started ahead of time. So you have a little bit of that, um, just the progression story. And then we'll come back and add some more to this one. So here we have the one that I've already started and we are going to do a little bit of addition to this one. And then we'll come back to the other one and get ourselves to this point. So you can see that this was put on just like the one we just did, where it was directly over that light color. And then I came in with my Annie Sloan chalk paint and just brought colors that were already in my picture and just added it and added it in like a stippling motion. And again, here's the back. We're gonna put a little something on the back. Um, and then, so I've already covered this whole thing with our Annie Sloan clear matte lacquer. So it's ready for whatever I'm going to do. So on this one, I feel like it just needs a little bit of zhuzhing, a little bit more fun. So this is where those Iron Orchid Designs beautiful image transfers are going to come in. So I've got the purples in here. So I thought it might be fun to just try and mimic a little bit of that. And I don't think I can. All right, so. I am now going to add some of these beautiful image transfers. Again, I've got some purples in here to uh, mirror into the purples over here. And um, it looks pretty stark with the white, but as soon as I take this off and put it on, you're gonna see that it's just going to blend in 
Beautiful. Let's put this one on here, and now I'm just going to rub it on. It's not a very pretty sound, but it's going to be beautiful when it's on. Can you see um, that it's, you can see that color transferring off of the carrier paper and onto the suitcase. I caught a bubble there. Let's see if I can catch it. Oh, look at that. That makes me happy. <laughs> I can see the color has transferred off of the carrier paper. I can pull it off and there it is on my piece. I like to turn my carrier paper over and just gently but firmly just make sure it's fully rubbed on there. That's called burnishing it on. Actually gone ahead and created a cute little stencil so this is just I've done this this is something that we do here down at the passion at home we do create custom stencils and we are carefully I don't want to take the chance of taking any of that beautiful paper off because it's still fairly fresh. I'm just going to stick this on me for a minute. And it seems like a crazy thing to do, but it's just making that sticky a wee bit less. And then I think I want this slightly off to the side. And how level does that look? I'm on a funny angle. I'm just going to lift it up for a second. I think I like it there. And I'm going to take a little bit of the Annie Sloan in graphite. I'm just going to pull a little bit on my brush out. And then I'm going to use, when I stencil, I don't want to use full heavy paint because I don't want to take the chance of it going under. Because I'm working with a sticker stencil, I don't have to be quite as dry as if I was just doing a regular stencil, but you want to offload your brush. All right, here we go. And I like to work in little circles like this. And I'd rather go over it twice than to make a mess and put too much paint. Okay, so here we go, the reveal. Look how beautiful and soft that is. Here we go. I love Okay, so I think I'm loving where this has gone with all the beautiful little florals on there. I am going to come back to this later, not on camera, but I'm just going to give it one more coat of that matte lacquer from Annie Sloan just to make sure that everything is fully sealed and protected so that this can actually go on a vacation. All right. Okay, so this is fairly dry. It's still got some drying time to go, but I'm ready to, it's, it's um, enough for me to add some more paint. So I'm going to come in with Annie Sloan chalk paint. I'm going to come in with our original color. I'm going to pull in some olive green because I see that in my piece and I am keeping this beautiful green trim here because I think it's stunning especially when I open this up. So I do want to incorporate that as well. And then I've got these beautiful pinks and purples and we're just going to do a little bit of playing around. So I'm using a dry brush. I haven't wet it or anything like that. And I'm going to start by just bringing in some of my original color and I'm just going to pounce right up and over and just, I'm just adding texture coming in. If I put too much, I can always wipe it back. I'm going to pick up a little bit of green because I like the idea of that they're in a bit of the, the green grass down here. 
And so this is where you just get to play a little bit and bring it in. And if I found that I had put too much in a section, I can come back with even just a, a dry paintbrush or I can come back and soften it with my finger or with a little bit of water. So again, it's already been sealed. You just have so much um, control at this point. So I'm just bringing this in. And again, I'm just pouncing it. And I can bring it up, I can bring it wherever I want that to go. And I don't mind coming a little bit right over top of my paper because it just softens and blurs all those beautiful edges. If I found that my colors were getting muddy because I'm doing them well, they're all still wet, then I can just switch it out, grab a fresh paintbrush, or give it a little bit of time to dry before I come back in with another color because I don't want it to get muddy. Okay. Okay, so now I want to, as I gradually go up, I wanna bring in some of these soft pinks and purples. And again, I'm starting with some of that base color, bringing it in a little bit. And then I'm gonna pick up some of that purple. And you can see how now we're just blending these guys together and sort of creating our own, yeah, it almost looks like that paper. I want a little bit of that pink as well. Just softening those edges. Okay. So I have my typeset stamps from Iron Orchid Designs. I have lined them up on this thin mount that has the grid. We sell these here. They're amazing. It makes it really easy, especially when you're working with words. Um, so again, it's one set. I had it set how I wanted it on my suitcase, so I knew where it was going to go and then I picked up the letters on the thin mount. Okay, so I'm gonna do this where I can see it, and I'm kind of eyeballing what I'm hoping is going to be center. Oops, don't shift. Once you get it down there, hang on to it. One hand needs to stay on there the whole time, and I'm just going to trace right over top of all of these letters and hopefully I'm not getting the extra <laughs> bits, but because it is sealed, I can just wipe that off right away. Let's have a quick peek. Yeah, I think I like it. So there we go. And now I need to redo the O. From we have misplaced our Y. So I'm stamping this. I have a piece of tape across there, and then I'm going to pull that back. I know that that's not going to go where it shouldn't go. And I'm ready to line this up. And again, once you put it down, just commit to it so that you're not going to have it shift on you. Bottom of the one, and I'm going to stamp that. And again, remove the piece that I don't want on there. And I'm going to line it up as best as possible. Press it down. There we go. So really, you wouldn't hardly even notice that that wasn't the proper letter. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, so again, turning that around so you can see it came from that drab suitcase. And we have decoupage, we have Annie Sloan chalk painted, we have put some image transfers on here, and we've really turned it from drab to something super cool, super amazing. All of the products that you saw me use here today, we sell at The Passionate Home. You can check us out online, thepassionatehome.com. And we do workshops, we do all sorts of amazing things. So check us out. Hopefully you're inspired and um, I look forward to seeing you and seeing projects that you do.